Russian economy once again defies the doomsayers. That was what I recently read in a very reputable magazine called The Economist. The article from March 13th. Moreover, there are other reputable media and organizations that are talking about the same about how Russian economy is defying, uh, defying everyone saying anything against it. Besides The Economist, Politico writes that Russian economy is sanctions proof and it is why it avoids defeat in Ukraine. And even the International Monetary Fund forecasts Russian economy growing by 2.6% in 2024. 2.6%. That is a breakthrough. So you understand, in the last 15 or so years, in the peaceful, rich years when Russia was respected and still a member of G8, Russian economy grew on average by 1% every year. And now 2.6%. Amidst all the troubles and the sanctions, the IMF forecasts 2.6% 2024. And I'd like to talk about that. I find it interesting, amusing, and worth looking deeper into. But before I go any further, I'd like to ask all the honorable media organizations and experts this one simple question. What in the world are you smoking? Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. No propaganda BS or lies here, only truth, common sense, and logic, and some emotions too, because I am a human being after all. Let's talk of Russian economy, but this time there will be no numbers, figures, no facts. I'll simply give you a different angle of looking at Russian economy. Mm, actually, I'll explain how I see other people looking and analyzing and talking about Russian economy. And you know, Russian economy is important because that's the foundation for the way that, how Russia acts. If Russian economy is weak, it won't be able to maintain the war in Ukraine. If it's strong, um, it's, if it's surviving, if it's growing, then yes, the war, yes, the war will continue for a very long time. So Russian economy is very, very important. Now, when it comes to discussing the state of Russian economy, there have been two opposite camps. They formed in the first weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine, right at the time when the countries all over the world started placing economic sanctions upon Russia. Soon it became the most sanctioned country no, not in the world, but in the history of humankind. And for a good reason. We all know that. So, people started arguing what awaits Russia and its economy in the future, given the circumstances. They, uh, there are two camps, and I call the first camp the optimists. And the second camp is... <laughs> well... <sighs> I call it the riders of the apocalypse, <laughs> riders of the storm. And I myself uh, am proud member of the second camp. I am the rider of the apocalypse for the Russian economy. <laughs> now, um, it is my understanding, and uh, let me remind you, I am economist by trade studied in two countries and I know a thing or two of why and how economies behave and you know it's been my understanding that Russia economically is in trouble in very big trouble but first things first what is it all about an economy is a complex system of interrelated production consumption and exchange activities that ultimately determine how resources are allocated among all participants. 
the production, consumption, and distribution of goods and services combine to fulfill the needs of those living and operating within the economy, the people. That's very basic, standard, and formal conservative explanation of what economy is. In other words, economy is not rocket science. It is a complex system, yes, but this complex system is currently understood by modern economists fairly well, and it is understood fairly well how economy behaves and what makes it behave in certain ways. So let's talk about Russian economy. It, uh, you know, at first, let's look at the arguments of the optimists, happy-go-lucky inhabitants of the first camp. You know, if I were to divide all optimists into two categories, <laughs> well, you know, all optimists are not created equal. <laughs> I'd divide them um, into two parts, and I'd call one part crazy optimists and another part reserved optimists, normal optimists. Crazy optimists are those mostly inside Russia who just look at the surface of things. They don't understand how economy works and they are always ready to project their uneducated opinion to the world, to others. And trust me, there are so many people in Russia like that. Or perhaps they know what's going on, but due to different circumstances, they cannot say the truth. There are many of those in Russia too. For example, the ones who get paid by the Russian government, the ones who must oblige to the party line. You, you know, you get the idea. The crazy optimists usually bring up wrong evidence that the Russian economy has survived all the sanctions and it is doing well. For example, many were saying that Russian ruble getting strong in the summer of 2022 was a big sign of healthy economy. They didn't look deep enough for the reasons of such temporary ruble strengthening. And it is fairly easy for any economist to understand the reasons and to understand that it's only temporary. Or another example. They would show fully stocked shelves of different stores in Russia and say, See? We have plenty of everything. There is no shortages of anything. No food, you know, clothing, stuff like that. So we, it means that the Russian economy is fine. Or they would give the fact that the Russian economy simply continued to work despite the sanctions. Like it was a huge achievement, you know. <laughs> Crazy economists, even this day continue to give crazy evidence and explanations, crazy explanations that Russian economy has survived and doing well. The evidence that simply is not scientific and, you know, wrong. And to be honest with you, I don't even look at this kind of people, at this kind of, I can't even say them, economists, the optimists. Um, I think they're just that, either crazy or uninformed. But this is the second type of, type of optimists, and I call them reserved or normal optimists. They're mostly educated and knowledgeable, but uninformed or misled. Most of foreign economists and or reporters that write on Russian economics continue to claim that Russia has withstood the pressure of the international sanctions. And they are what I call the reserved economists. And most likely, they are uninformed. Or informed not well enough. Russian economy defies the doomsayers, says the economist. Russian economy turned out to be sanctions-proof, saying the political. Russian economy will grow by 2.6%, saying the International Monetary Fund. Again, in my opinion, they are grossly 
uninformed. They use and rely on data that is released by the Russian government agencies, for example, by Rostat. And there's simply no other information, economic information, about uh, what's going on in Russian economy. Uh, just the, the info data, information released by the, the, the government agencies. But the thing is, we have to look at that data at a certain angle. We have to take it with a grain of salt. We have to understand that a great deal of that data is sugar-coated, is uh, overly optimistic, I should say. So why Russian economy is still alive? I'll explain in very short and very simple words right now. And um, I'll also add explanation of why it has grown in 2022, 2023, and uh, why they're saying it will grow by 2.6% this year. Russian economy is still alive, although it's not well, very far from being well, because of two major things. First is extensive reserves and its riches. Russia is the richest country in the world if we look at its mineral resources deposits. It's been selling very expensive mineral resources all over the world. And not just oil and gas, the ores, metals, you know, you name it. That has allowed Russia to amount large reserves cash mostly, gold, you know, things like that, stored in so-called the Fund of National Well-Being. That's a savings account of Russia, uh, the country of Russian people, well, Russian government, really. So that is reason number one. And the reason number two, very tight state regulation of everything, economy. Russian economy was much less regulated. Um, but after the start of the war, um, over two years ago, the state stepped up and... Uh, how do I explain that? Uh, grabbed people and businesses by some organs. Or we could say by the throats or by something else. Therefore, um, it did not allow market players act in free ways. Therefore, there's simply no free economy in Russia anymore. For example, if you have a bank account in Russia and you have American dollars there that you deposited a long time ago, a hey, commercial bank, that's your money, right? Um, you can deposit in any currency, Chinese yuan, European euro, um, Swiss francs, you know, anything, okay? So um, if, you have, if you happen to have a bank account in Russia in U.S. dollars, you simply cannot withdraw cash. The state has forbade you to do so. It actually has forbade banks to give you your money. Why? Because the state is trying to keep ruble to dollar exchange rate under control that way. Has it worked? Heck yes. For the most part, it has worked. But is that free economy? Well, no, it's not free economy any longer. Or another example. If you, a company that, for example, refine gasoline, produce gasoline, take oil, crude oil, and re, you know put it through a process of refining and receive gasoline. That's your product, right? Well, you simply cannot sell it abroad any longer like you used to sell it. You used to you know, be able to do anything you wanted with it. But now state prohibits you to do so because state has other ideas how to take your gasoline and use it. Or another example, if you are exporting your products and receiving payments in dollars, any products, okay, you're just selling things outside Russia, and you receive revenue in dollars, you must sell 80% of 
all your dollar revenue at fixed price, ruble to dollar. You cannot keep U.S. dollars. The state says so. The state tells you what to do. And there are other examples. Well, I think you get the idea. Russian economy grows only in the way of war. Russian government has a strategic goal to win the war with Ukraine, no matter what the costs are, in, why, in one way or another, no matter what that way is. I think they themselves, they still don't understand how to win this war, but they understand one thing. They need the domestic war machine for the win. And that's what they that that's what they have been building the domestic war machine. Russian government is controlling the economy now. It's controlling everything, and the control is only growing. It's only tightening. Russian economy is not the free market economy it once was in the early nineties. It's evolving back to the planned economy of old USSR. A little different, though. Planned economy version 2.0. Upgraded and improved in terms of even more economy, by the, even more control by the state. Um, just a little off topic. Why do I think Russian government, Russian leadership doesn't really care what happens and what this win over Ukraine achieved at what cost? Why they don't care about the costs? Well, they obviously are destroying the country. Because of one simple reason. Russia is a dictatorship now. And uh, the only sole purpose of the dictator, the goal, to prolong his power. And what Vladimir Putin is doing is he's prolonging his power. He's grabbing at his power in any way he can he doesn't let go he doesn't care what happens to the following generations of russians his goal is here and now he needs to stay on top for as long as possible plain and simple that explains his actions perfectly and that explains the actions of russian government because the government is support of Vladimir Putin. It's serving Vladimir Putin, okay? That's the vertical of power he has built, and he carefully placed every single person in his or her own place inside the vertical power. But, hey, back to the economy. Um, so Russian, Russian government is controlling everyone and everything in Russian economy now, and... It's not the free market economy any longer. And, um, you know, it's taking all the resources available and beefing up the military with that, those resources. You know, the military being, uh, you know, the military industrial complex, that's what I mean. The war machine. And the military industrial complex is showing phenomenal growth. For the past 25 months, it has been showing unseen before growth. It is simply being flooded with money, plain and simple. But at the same time, the rest of the economy, non-war economy, is showing a phenomenal decline. A decline that Russia has not seen in its history. As soon as the war stops and the... Uh, military industrial complex does not work at the speed it's working now holy moly you watch because that phenomenal growth is going to vanish into thin air but that phenomenal phenomenal decline is here to stay for a very long time just to give you a basic understanding in 2024 russian um, Russian government is spending on the war, on the military industrial complex. Um, its military spendings are more that 
then it has spent on all healthcare combined in the last four years. Last four years, all healthcare combined, everything. Drugs, equipment, new constructions, salaries to doctors, the medical personnel, and so forth. Combine the previous four years, and it's going to be less than military spendings in 2024. You know, this growth reminds me of cancer. Cancer also grows, you know, but such growth is lethal. Russian government needs money to keep feeding the war cancer. But it has money no more. It's all been spent on this <laughs> economic growth. <laughs> there are only three ways how to keep on getting money and to feed the war cancer. First is currency emission. Russian government will be printing more money and we all know where it will lead the entire country to. Number two is to devalue Russian ruble. And again, it's it's bad. We all know where it's going to lead to. People be, will become so much poorer than they know. And number three is to steal from both people and businesses in so many different ways. And the most recent way is, well, the government is raising taxes for everyone now, for poor people, for rich people, and for the corporations, for businesses, and possibly it even raises added value tax. The, you know, this tax that is included in all goods and services, all products in Russia sold. And with that money that is stealing from the Russian people and businesses, the government is feeding the war cancer. There are simply no other ways, just these three ways. And even this war growth that has been phenomenal in the past 24 months or so, even this war growth is getting over. Because all the resources to feed the growth, they are being exhausted in Russia. So colleagues from uh, The Economist, from The Politico, from the IMF, continue um, smoking what you've been smoking. And please keep on material coming. Keep on amusing us. I, on the contrary, will keep supplying real data and showing you real changes in the lives of Russian people. By the way, I do that every single day in the news updates. Three posts a day, three important news that matter with my explanations and analysis and comments in every post. Every post, nine uh, news total every day. Please join Patreon at patreon.com or become a sponsor here at YouTube. And get access to nine news every day, the news that matter and that are important. And uh, this is um, it for my message today. Thank you very much for coming. I would like to ask you to um, do me a favor and like this video, like this live stream, if you, of course, liked what you just heard. And I would like to invite you to uh, carry on and join me in the live stream chat. This is my most favorite part of any live stream. I'm turning on the live stream chat on right now. Um, I'll be glad to answer your questions, um, to see your comments. And at the end, we will finish by praying. If you're here for the first time, I would like to let you know that this place, this community inside Russia, has the best moderation team in the world. Lorna, Mami K, um, Bob S, Harry Potnan, Amir, and Dirk are great people, good friends, and the best mods you can see on the internet. If you want me to um, notice 
your message or question easier, please put it in all caps and put inside Russia after at sign so it appears highlighted in large orange box. It's much easier for me to see that way. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lorna. Thank you so much. Good to see that you uh, sponsor again. The usual suspects, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine living my life without you showing up every day now. Terry, Carano, uh, Brother Randall, Kevin Baker, Pamela J, uh, Ho Ho, KG1, Light Motive for Me, Sam K, The Legend, Life, Jeffrey S., Mr. Humor of Inside Russia, but never take Jeffrey's uh, dating advice. <laughs> Scott Nesbitt, Sean, uh, no, Seahawk, Roy Cousins, Chirper, good to see you, Amy, Mr. Quist, 125, Elsha, Juan Marinos, Crusader Damien, um, the parent of the best questions of Inside Russia. Sam K. Uh, hi, D. Hi. Tim and Pam Tree Kate. Everyone, thank you for coming. Let me jump straight into the comments or questions that are highlighted or in all caps. Baker stock, howdy. Terry, thank you. I try to tell how it is, you know. Suzanne Samuelson from Sweden, howdy. Cool story, bro. Temporary war economy, temporary boost. Well, yes and no. I think that temporary war economy, perhaps it's going to finish this war economy longer than we think and we hope. Because Russia might, if it freezes the conflict in one way or another, then it might remain isolated and it might might remain building up military industrial complex so war economy will be a long one but definitely temporary and it certainly will not give any further boosts to the economy it economy will be consumed by this thing it's like a cancer growth you know <laughs> what you have been smoking i couldn't believe that when i when i saw this article by the economist i couldn't believe it i perhaps it's me who's so stupid who's so <laughs> so uh i don't know so uninformed unintelligent <laughs> this is, perhaps i don't understand something but i try to break it down into small basic things and two and two does not add to four if you know what i mean okay um anyway i know i know i'm right here tam jules howdy um sunny day in ireland today was well, fantastic gloria good to see you david porter from chernovtsi ukraine Hello, David. Fantastic to see you. Please say hello to everyone around you. And uh, I'm sending my love to uh, Chernovtsi, to your family, and to Ukraine. Elsha, thank you so much. You know, I tried to <laughs> make it as simple as possible. Okay, I know economy is uh, complicated, but the thing is it's 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 well uh researched 
It's well understood. There are scientists, they understand the economy very well. Um, and what's happening right now in Russia is definitely not your normal economic growth. It's cancer growth. Owen Evans, thank you so much. Great to have you in the live stream. Palm tree Kate, thank you so much for the good words. I tried very much. Faith Russard, howdy. Semki towards coffee, two British pounds. Thank you so much. Uh, much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. How about that? Towards tea. Well, I drink coffee every morning. I, I have one cappuccino at breakfast and I don't even order anymore. Um, basically, all I order is a cappuccino. Uh, just plain cappuccino, no sugar, nothing added. Uh, and, well, there are two things I order. Uh, but but I usually order one thing for a long time, for example, months at a time. That's porridge, oatmeal, uh, no sugar added. I specifically ask for, you know, cooks to not add sugar into my oatmeal, and they do that. Or I order two fried eggs, uh, a few pieces of salad, a toast, and um, uh, that's pretty much it. I think, yeah, this is it. And um, the waiters, they don't even ask what, what they, they know me so well. <laughs> We're like friends now, you know. So um, I drink coffee in the morning, and for the rest of the day, I drink tea. Uh, up you 2408 police arrived an hour later to uh, Kroko City Hall because they wanted to ensure that themselves are not in danger to ensure the terrorists are really gone they protected only themselves not the public thank you and I'm very glad that you actually your opinion uh, is the same as mine I'm gonna give you a link right now uh, hang on one second I made a video about a week ago, Terror in Moscow, KGB's biggest fail, but I might as well call it KGB and police's biggest fails. Um, here is the link for you. So if you watch this video, you will um, see that my opinion is absolutely same. There you go. Aqua Borealis, uh, thank you so much from Canada. Russian people seem resigned to detach from the politics and democratic goals. Is there a strong hidden desire for these that we don't know about? Or is personal safety and economic well-being the only thing? Thanks for the support. Uh, it's really big. Thank you. I appreciate it. Much, much appreciated by me and uh, by my family. And your question is actually gold because from what I understood, you're asking a very fundamental thing about Russia. And this thing I've been thinking about for the past 24 months. <sighs> Russian people are detached from politics and democratic goals. Yes. Um, is there a strong hidden desire for these? You see what the problem is? You live in Canada. You're a Canadian. You were born in Canada, raised in Canada. And right at the day one, you started absorbing democratic values. 
Canada is one of the best countries in the world, okay? Um, I, you know, there are mixed opinions about what's happening in Canada now, what has been happening for a couple of years. I don't know. But what I know about the Canadians, every single Canadian that I have met is it's been a fantastic person. Smiles, uh, nice, never mean, never aggressive, cool, laid back, you know, just, just fantastic people. And the country is also fantastic. And when uh, Russians decide where to go, we discuss that every morning almost, you know. There are two top countries in the world. Well, two and a half, three, I would say. First is the United States of America. That's the land of immigrants, obviously. Uh, everyone wants to make it there. The second is Canada. And the third is Australia, okay. Um, and... You were born and raised in the atmosphere of democracy and certain values. Russians, most Russians, they haven't even been out of Russia. They have no clue what the world looks like on the outside of Russia. They, they have no clue what democracy is. They have heard of the democracy. And I made a stream about that. In Russia, the government um, replaced understanding of true meaning of democracy with some ugly concept, okay? So when uh, you tell an average older Russian about democracy, they start hissing at you, okay? Because they don't, they, 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 they confuse democracy with something else, with, uh, um, you know, um, economic demise. It's just completely different. I made a stream about it. Look it up. So if they knew what you know, of course they would have desire for that. But they simply have no clue. And now personal safety and economic well-being are so important that it prevails over anything else. They have built their own bubbles, informational bubbles, and they live inside bubbles. And when I talk to many people and I start asking questions, they'll go, no, 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 we don't talk about this. Why? We don't want to, we don't know, we don't read the news. We don't want to know anything what's going on. It's easier that way. We just work, we go to work, we earn money, we feed families. That's it. No, please don't speak to us about that. Um, that's how they live, you know. Uh, and that's pretty sad. So if they knew what democracy, real politics were, uh, if they knew that they could influence politics, if they could understand that, they, they would think differently, I think. This is, this is uh, <laughs> the result of many months of analyzing this idea. And I see that Crusader Damien sent a question, and usually it's the best questions, hands down. So thank you, friend. War economy footing produces shortages in consumer goods and discontent plus... Russian economy is the size of Italy. It will not be sustainable against Western mobilized economies once we get serious. Well, thank you. It's basically my idea of today's stream um, that whatever they have been selling as economic growth is not. It's just sugar coating and it's flooding the military industrial complex with economy. And the military industrial complex products are, you know, rockets and missiles and grenades and ammo. They, they, they're sent to Ukraine, they're either intercepted or they reach their goal, you know. They either blow up in the air or they um, hit residential buildings, you know, facilities, whatever. The products are useless. They flood money to create this expensive seeds of death that evaporate okay at best they evaporate at worst they kill other people that's the result of war economy thomas uh 
Kaplan, thank you so much. Fantastic. I don't recall the name. I think you are a new person here. Welcome. Welcome to Inside Russia. I hope you keep on coming back. Angela Makno, good to see you. Uh, Pat Scully. Uh, oh, you're from Greece. Oh my gosh, this is so small. Is it Greek? Flag? I don't, can barely see. I'm sorry. Bob Brennan, howdy. Born and raised in the USA, thought democracy was the best form of government. American democracy is broken. Um, Bob, you know, I don't really know whether it's broken or not broken. I, you know, how do how would I know? I, I am not I'm not seeing it with my own eyes. Um, I've heard different stories, but one thing I believe is the American people. I think that even if it's broken, I think you can fix it because you built something beautiful in the first place and you're capable of building, you surely capable of fixing it. Mac from Switzerland, howdy. Uh, will the conflict and mistrust of Christian Russian against Muslims, for example, Kazakhs, increase after the attack? Um, yes, we have been seeing the rise of xenophobia at this point. Vladimir Putin uh, addressed... Uh, well, he made a speech at the, some kind of conference of uh, Russian Federal Police Leadership, Ministry of Internal Affairs, where he said that Russian migration policy, uh, not migration, Russian immigration policy should be changed. Um, and he said it in his own w way of being very ambiguous. Uh, you know, on paper, he said, oh, we shouldn't be tightening it. We should be doing things smarter. But the message, subliminal message was to the cops, hey, we need to tighten our immigration policy. Okay, um, we have been seeing xenophobic attacks in Russia uh, in the last week, in the last 10 days after the attack. And not only on... Kazakhs, Tajiks, you know, people from other... I actually have not heard of any uh, any uh, xenophobia cases against Kazakhs, but Tajiks mostly. Tajiks are... Uh, uh, Tajiks are the ones who are common numbers, large numbers, and, uh, you know, go work at construction sites and basically take jobs that Russians don't want to take. Uh, there have been attacks about against Yakuts, and Yak Yakuts uh, are indigenous people of Russia's north. They're Russian, considered Russian nationals. They're born and raised inside Russia. Um, but they were mistaken for Tajiks, and they were attacked, uh, at least on one occasion. So, yes, will the conflicts and mistrust uh increase yes it will we have seen it happening in russia in the 90s it was pretty bad um it started getting better uh, when the the wonder years the golden years in russia were happening in 2000s you wait and see it'll get worse definitely not a, a gene stealer <laughs> thank you so much for sponsoring five people uh here at inside russia from me and from five people thank you and same goes to frank uh frank i hope everything is well i hope you got hold of your medicine um thank you so much for sponsoring five people fantastic thank you sam k um Joe Bloggs got his YouTube play button plug. Not sure what you mean by is he did he get his channel back? No, he's that's still his second channel, but he's got twenty two thousand subscribers, which is which is awesome. 
So we just released another hacking update, which I definitely am going to see. Uh, well, good luck, Joe. You know, anything I can do to help you, I'll help you out. Hello from Oregon, USA. Enjoy your commentary. Thank you, Ukraine. Thank you so much. Um, nice, uh, nice name, by the way. It's hard to argue with. <laughs> Edvinas, uh, thank you so much. Hey, Constantine, as a videographer, I can tell the quality of videos and streams are becoming better and better with time. Watching you from the beginning of the war. Greetings from Lithuania. Thank you so much. Um, sending my love to Lithuania. Um, I hope you watched the video with a Lithuanian dude. Well, Canadian Lithuanian. Um, he did a video not too long ago. I think it's called Lithuania Explained. Well, thank you. Every time I see someone coming here from uh, the Baltics, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bulgaria, um, warms my heart thank you so much and as for the quality of videos and streams you know i've done over thousand videos now and streams most are streams of course because uh, i do them every day for 24 months probably take a couple months because i miss live stream now and then um I still have a lot of questions to myself as to videographer because uh, at this point, thousand plus videos and streams, the quality should have been perfect. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I still struggle. Uh, so, um, but anyway, Edvinas, thank you so much for good words. KG1, is it just the propaganda machine providing the figures? Will the Russian people revolt when the economy collapses? Well, um, it's really hard to forecast these things. Will they protest? Will they, you know, revolt? I don't know. I doubt they... It's going to take a, so much for Russians to, to revolt. But it's going to get very interesting now. It's getting interesting now because, you know, I've been telling you that so many things are wrong with the economy because... It can, it, can, it can only take so much. Um, for example, Russian banks are cut off from the international uh, transfer system, SWIFT, and isolated. And Russia is cut off from uh, cheap, long money at the international market. That alone is a huge blow to the economy. Or... Three million Russian men, able, young, labor force, the cream of the crop, educated, leave Russia all at once. That's a huge blow to any economy. You know, and by itself, just that happens. The Russian economy is going to hurt. Any economy would hurt. But you see, past 24 months, a perfect storm has been cooking over Russia has been preparing, you know, and now it's hitting the country at full force. Everything is happening, started happening all at once. And it's going to get very, very interesting, very tragic for Russian people, but very interesting for the rest of us. Um, there are problems on the horizon with uh, availability of food because Russia grows enough food to feed all citizens, you know. Shortages of diesel right now are being reported from all over. And that means that, uh, you know, of course, the priority is the tanks at the front lines, the war. Uh, but what about the farmers who are planting right now? It says the planting season it has it's starting right now. Okay, what are they gonna harvest in September or in August? 
Um, Russian ruble is going to lose a great deal of its value. It's losing already. Um, price is going to skyrocket for everything. High interest, key interest rate has been killing Russian business. And that's a huge blow economy. Russian people will feel that very soon. That's a huge blow. And they're gonna that's 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 a huge another huge thing is that they're gonna raise taxes significantly very soon. Now everything is ready. Putin's gonna do this and tax is gonna be risen. Um well that's gonna affect everyone, even those who live in the bubbles. <laughs> Say we don't support. Well, you do now. Well, you understand that now your taxes have been increased. Now you understand. So, so it's interesting. Um, I don't know when, but please keep on watching the live streams. Keep on watching the news. That's going to get interesting. Lorraine Prasnowski, thank you so much for um, saying hello by sending 10 bucks. Um, much appreciated. Fantastic to see you. Everyone, Lorraine is one of the pillars of Inside Russia. She's been a supporter of the channel for, I don't know, 20, 20, 10 months or something like that. You know, crazy number of months. Um, Mac, another question from you. Uh, no, why I have already seen that. No, that's another one. Can you imagine that in Russia, the Orthodox Church can be declared the only patriotic religion? Well, it has been. Uh, the Muslims are holding out, and uh, but but the Orthodox is on the way, well on the way there, and. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going to look deeper into this. Uh, there, uh, the, I saw some information that Russian Orthodox Church declared holy war in Ukraine um, on March 30th. I saw the news. I'm not sure whether it's true or not. But it just shows you that Russian Orthodox Church is... I don't know who they pray to. Airborne 80, thank you so much. I'm a retired Los Angeles police officer. I was shocked at uh, the failed response to the attack. My wife is Vietnamese and she thinks they were paid to not respond. She's grown in a communist country. Your thoughts? Um, airborne, um, my thoughts are, I think that, first of all, at this point, I don't know the answer to the question whether the attacks were coordinated or helped or assisted by someone inside Russia. If the answer is yes, then your wife could be right. At this point, I think that, uh, you see, police in Russia serves a certain very niche purpose. It serves and protects the power the absolute power, the czar. Okay, it makes sure that no one attempts to, uh, tries to, to make attempts at the power of the czar. If someone wants to czar, uh, you know, free elections in Russia, that's a threat to the czar. So if someone goes on the street and protests with a white piece of paper, the police is there very efficiently arresting, you know, beating, you know, walking up and things like that. But that's it. That's their main goal. The second goal is they have power to use violence, legal rights, and they use that power to make a buck or two on the side. And that's all they do. Now, when there's a shooting happening and right around the corner, that is a possible threat to your life if you're a cop in Russia. You didn't join the force for that. You didn't join the force to protect people. You protect Tsar. You protect the government. You protect, you know, whoever pays you. And that's not the people. So you protect those who pay you. 
your priority after that is your own life. So as soon as they heard the shots, I think they would just run the other way. And then uh, one hour later, they made sure that everything was over and then they were their lives were not in danger. And they, they, they came back. Well, actually, I made a video about that. Go and check it out. It says uh, the terror attack on Moscow, the biggest fail uh, of KGB, and then police might as well. And after that, and that's where I explained my thoughts about uh, what happened at the terror attack. And then the next uh, stream I did, or video I did, I compared U.S. police and Russian police. Go and check it out. You might find it interesting. And uh, I I lived in the USA for nine years, and I dealt with police quite often. And I I gotta tell you that I had never had a problem. I never had a cop trying to frame me for something, a cop trying to extort money, a cop hinting so I'd pay him a bribe or pay her a bribe. If I sped, if I was speeding, I'd stop. I'd be stopped. I'd. I would be either given a ticket or, on quite a few occasions, I was warned and let go. Okay, so uh, you guys are awesome. I'm pretty sure there are bad cops out there, but just like anywhere else. Um, you know, in general, I, I, I'd say that uh, local locally funded police is one of the marvels that the United States of America has, so... Carson Larrymore, thank you so much. Is the ruble still around 92 to $1? Can we expect it to start rising after a second quarter? No, no, no. It's been rising steadily small uh, in small increments, but steadily. Uh, it was 90 rubles at the day of the elections, and it's risen by 2 plus rubles. Um on a couple days, it raised, it, it, it rose by a great deal, and then that... Uh, went back down i watch it every day and you know what today is wednesday let me see how ruble performed uh i did not check today um 92.53 so halfway to 93 and i forecast it's going to be rising and the raise will be significant not we won't have to wait until second quarter it's going to be earlier than that daniel mckinnis thank you so much for the super chats that i saw in the comments and super thanks thank you uh, thank you so much for the good words having trouble with super chat um Karano, things more definitely the best on YouTube, and I agree with you, hundred percent. Pinda the peanut, Constantine, thank you for all reporting. Very happy to be in this community you started. Well, I I can't even say I started it. I it's, it's all of us have started it, you know, because without you it wouldn't be the community. It's fantastic to see you, too. Uh, you were traveling, and we missed you. Thank you. Patrick um, from Switzerland. Speaking of economy and you being in Tashkent, how has trade between Uzbekistan and Russia developed in the past two years? Greetings from Zurich, Switzerland. By the way, been to Zurich. What a place. Switzerland is a, <laughs> probably the best country in the world in terms of uh, nature, cleanliness, uh, how everyone uh, live according to the law and things like that, you know, paradise. Zurich, just about any place in Switzerland is, is perfect. Um, the trade between Uzbekistan and Russia has uh, jumped in two years. Not just the trade, but uh over the course of two years over hundred thousand russians uh have either visited uzbekistan or moved here temporarily or moved here and then left for 
other countries transited. Uh, meanwhile, once arriving to Uzbekistan, the first thing that every single Russian does, runs to a Uzbek bank, opens an account, because uh, it gets a visa and a MasterCards. Because uh, they are banned in Russia, as you know, in... Uh, you know, there's not much you can do without Visa or MasterCard. Uh, so once you open the account, you transfer or you deposit lots of money that you are able to uh, salvage from Russia. <laughs> so that's been a huge influx of capital into Uzbek economy, uh, Uzbek banks. Not just Uzbek. Um, Armenian GDP in 2022 rose by 12.5%. So you understand, that's 12.5%. That's, that's an economic miracle, okay? Because so many Russians took uh, their money out of Russia to Armenia. So it's been a very, very uh, healthy relationship for Uzbekistan. So many co uh, companies have been opened and they used as transit for consumer goods. Uh as you know, um, you know, Russia is under sanctions, so what they do is they open companies in Armenia, Uzbekistan, Georgia, other countries, Saudi Arabia, or anywhere else, and uh, they build a uh, logistical logistics chain and uh, move goods and services through this chain, and Uzbekistan is definitely in the chain. Americans are here. Uh, the, they're watching what's going on. I've met them, uh, well, I bumped into these people occasionally. It's not really difficult to understand who they are because they're always speaking freely, thinking that no one understands English. Uh, I was having lunch right next to them. They were discussing plans <laughs> how to find Russian companies. It was amusing to hear it. And another, another time I bumped into them was a conference. Uh, so it was also interesting. Anyway. Boris, thank you so much. To be honest, it is said Russian potentials will be will suffer greatly, but the Krem, Kremlin will hold out just like Iran and North Korea, weak and pitiful. Only the Russians can spare themselves from that fate. Uh, yes and yes, uh, it is said only Russians can spare themselves from that fate. Yes, you're right. Will Kremlin hold out just like North Korea and Iran? We will see. Uh, I wouldn't bet on it, but it's possible. Hoa Varenus, I would say, whatever the valor of the ruble, whatever it is, it is meaningless outside Russia and off the sage hands of the card-dealing Russian government. No one deals in rubles. And you're absolutely right. Uh, no one can argue with that. Old Silver, good to see you. Liz Mailer. Carlos Enrique Salas, cheers, sending my love to Italy, thank you for coming. Time's up, Nightbot. <laughs> thank you so much, Harvey. Countries that live alone don't do well. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Jojo Bean, Beans, 64. I tell you more. People who live alone, they usually don't do well. Perhaps they do well, but they do sad. I know. I lived alone. 
Ron. Uh, holy moly, from the middle of the Mojave Desert. Ron, you know what? One of uh Anyway, I, I drove from Vegas to California and back and forth a few times through Mojave Desert. Obviously, there's only one way. And let me tell you, this place is absolutely fantastic. I enjoy your 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 home so much. Um this it's beautiful. There's a certain feel about it. Um uh, I don't even know how to explain. Um uh, like I feel a wilderness and very unusual one and uh, rugged, but at the same time beautiful. I enjoyed the rides through Mojave Desert so much, the drives. So uh, sending my love to you. <laughs> Some K, it's really hard to argue with you. Paul Gallagher, uh, the last question slash statement I'm going to take. Chinese cars cost way more than the official exchange rate. If you're talking about Russia, then yes. In China, a Chinese car, a certain model, costs 900,000 rubles. In Russia, the very same car, the very same model, uh, costs almost 3 million rubles, 2.6 million. Same money, same exchange rate. It's just Chinese sell their cars in China for one price. They come to Russia and they triple the price uh, because they can. Because that's what the lack of competition does. Because that's what crooked Russian politicians are, uh, what they have done. That, because that's what Vladimir Putin has done by invading Ukraine. That's, that's a perfect example, the Chinese cars. Anyway, looks like my allergies are over. Because this is April. Uh, April 3rd. But that's okay. Because my daughter Sky brought American medicine from America. RW, thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Uh, no message, but message is heard here. It's very loud. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not just for the super chat, but for everything. <sighs> Okay, friends, uh, Las Vegas is in the state of California. Well, the latest I checked, it was in Nevada, but what do I know? <laughs> friends, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, finish the stream praying together. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope that you enjoyed the message, and let's finish it in a good way. Bye. Praying. Hang on one second. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much for everything that you have given us for this life, for this day. Uh, thank you for the food that you put on our tables and roofs that you placed over our heads. Thank you for the loved ones the, that you surrounded us with. Uh, thank you for the people who love us and who we, who, uh, people who we love. Uh, dear Lord, please... Help us keep the skies above our children's heads safe and peaceful. Um, please give us wisdom to 
raise our children in a way that when they grow up and become adults, they will never fight with each other, but love each other, and they will make this world a better place. For now, please keep our children safe and healthy because they are our world and our life. Dear Lord, please help stop the bloodshed in Ukraine. Uh, reach out and touch the hearts of those people responsible and capable to stop it and have them stop it. Please help every single Ukrainian who has been affected, answer their prayers and make their wishes come true. Please help my country, Russia, assemble the army of your strongest angels with sharpest swords, led by St. Michael in shining armor, and send them as heavenly avalanche to this earth to get, of the de get rid of the demons that have hijacked Russia, who we know by their faces, by their names. Please help send your angels to help good Russian people run Russia, make it loving, peaceful, and respecting. Please send safe travels to all people who are traveling. Send help to everyone who is in need of help in dire straits in rough waters. Please help all the women, uh, single mothers who are raising their children and uh, struggling, trying to end, make ends meet. Help those who are seeking for asylum of any kind. Um, God bless those who are helping Ukrainians and please help those Ukrainians who are currently under attacks or under threats of attacks of, by Russian missiles. Russian weapon, please uh, send them safety, ha send angels to watch over them. Dear Lord, please help all the sick, the addicted, the hungry, the jobless, the homeless, the depressed, the betrayed, the ones who are losing faith, the ones who are not feeling good about themselves and their lives. Um, have them feel your presence. Have them feel that you're right next to them, watching over them, loving them, helping and assisting them. Uh, have them feel your love. Have them feel your warmth. Uh, so they know that you're right next. They, they know they can rely on you. They know that uh, you are there with them. And that makes our lives. Understanding that makes... Every one of us feel so much better about our lives. So please help everyone in need and have them feel your presence. Have them feel that they're with you. You are with them. They're not alone. Thank you so much for allowing us to get together and um, pray together every day. Thank you for everyone praying right now, simply for people simply watching us pray. Please hear everyone's prayer, answer it, and make everyone's wish come true. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for everything, and I would like to ask you for a few people uh, who need your help. I will start with little girl Sarah. She needs your help recovering. And her family needs strength. Um, please send your angels to watch over Sarah and her mom and dad. Please help Lisa Kubrian with her recovery. Uh, Tom W., please help with recovery after hip replacement surgery. Uh, Terry Carter needs help, uh, help him to get through hard time, Mary Doran, Jay Spike, Tracy, uh, Frank Caprio, Gabing with Gary, Jim in Houston, Paula W., Frank in Texas, uh, please have Carol's mom, Dorothy, rest in peace, and Send Karen a strength. Um, 
please help team mayors with lung cancer larry b um Kaleen's dad, Dominic, please send Jason Carney recovery. Send Susie Mailer your love and strength. Help Morgan L. further recover. Also, Kyle's, Kyle E.'s wife, Rhonda McGillis Dory. Electron's family, uh, Kurt from Colorado, Deborah, Bogey Burger and his two sons need help. Wayne fighting two cancers, Dave, Don, Natasha, Yelena, Jake, Michael, Sky, Olya, Dasha, and Svetlana, Margaret, Linda, uh, Thank you for helping Yorkie's mom, Julia Haney, Darla, Lise Dumbrell, White Lightning, George Ruberty, Grace Philosophy, please help recover fast, uh, Randolph, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church, EMS Paramedic Liz, Karen from Maine, um, David Porter, his family, and everyone from Chernovtsi, Ukraine. Uh, Meta Spencer, Life, Pamela J, Stefan from Sweden, the Highwayman, and John Allen. Also, please help uh, our loved mod, Mommy K, give her strength and send complete recovery to her mom. Uh, thank you so very much, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving me a chance hearing my message. Thanks for liking and supporting, and uh, thank you for praying along with me. I would like to remind you that you are absolutely awesome, and you rock, and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday world news world news updates world's news update is seen from Russia that's coming up and before I finish I'd like to ask you again to say out loud along with me as loud as you can the following Carthago de Lenda Est <laughs>